Assalamu alaikum viewers, welcome back. And before the break, we are discussing about, uh, we are hearing uh, from our brothers their experiences in Islam. Now we'll go more details. What, uh, what do we mean by Islam and how to live our life in Islamic framework? So Tasif, my question to you. How do we practice Islam as Islam uh, guide us? And on that question, I would, would like to add something more. Especially we are discussing the spirituality of Islam. And when the spirituality comes, and ilm tasawuf is very close to the spirituality. So, first of all, I'm a layman, so explain to me what is ilm tasawuf. So, so, this is a really, really important question. So, I think on the first one, that what, what is Islam and, and how we practice it, and then the link uh, to tasawuf. So, firstly, our we need to understand our story, the, mm -hmm. where we have come from, and in this program, and, uh, which is a very unique program, we do discuss the spiritual aspects of Islam, but also our story as human beings, uh, where we have come from. Mm. That our life didn't start in 1990, 1980, 1970, but rather it started in the world of spirits. Mm. And th this discussion then helps us to understand that we really are not our physical body, our thoughts, our feelings even, mm -hmm. that there is a deeper reality which is our spirit that Allah SWT created. And then from that, in that spirit world, Allah SWT took a, give us a gift of free will. Mm. And then Allah SWT also made all of us bear witness that verily He is our Lord. This is all in the Quran mentioned. Allah SWT said, Allah SWT said, who is your Lord? So with that, each and every one of us then is sent into this world, which really is a perfect um, ground for testing. Mm. They really do we really believe Allah is our Lord or is our money, fame, name, our stresses, anxieties, are these our Lords or is Allah our God? So through that we then understand that in, when we look at our lives, even if you live 60, 70 years, once you take away sleep, maybe eight hours a day, that's 30 years of your life mm. and then you take away your childhood, your studies, your work time, there is very little time left. Mm. So then Allah SWT mentions in the Quran that we will end this life and then we'll be resurrected for judgment. Mm. That everything we have done in this life, whether it's been good or bad, whether it was true to Allah's covenant or not, we will be judged for. And all that will matter on that day, Allah SWT again mentions, is N no, not your career, whether you're a civil servant or you're a CEO, not your children, how many children you've had, what legacy you've left. Mm -hmm. Allah says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سليم. That only a sound, pure heart, heart will be of value on that day. Sure. So then our question, we say, then how does someone develop a sound heart mm -hmm. whilst in this? And this is where the knowledge of tasawwuf or Islamic spirituality or taskiya, however we want to frame it, mm -hmm. has a role which helps the Muslim live the Quran and the Sunnah mm -hmm. in a practical way so that he can achieve this okay. uh, aim and achieve this purpose. SubhanAllah. Okay, thank you. Right, Harun, <coughs> uh, you are discussing about the ilm tasawwuf and my concern is the tasawuf word is not in the Quran, neither in the Hadith. So some people might ask us, so where did you get this word from? Mm. Would you explain to them? Uh, this is a very, very uh, good question and often comes um, very frequently about where terms come from. And really, uh, we should be concerned about the reality before we go to the terms. But we'll explain a little bit about how terms came about and how, uh, for example, fiqh was not a term uh, uh, understood in the Prophet Sometimes There was no fiqh as such, or aqidah, or tajweed. These were things that were formulated after the Prophet So much like fiqh, aqidah, tajweed, the soul was formulated in a time where the scholars understood that they needed to formulate 
how it is to develop the uh, the characteristics of the Messenger of Allah. How do you develop the inner sincerity, the shukr, the patience, and much like the Jewish had preserved how we understand how to do tilawat of Quran. Mm -hmm. So tasawwuf was, alhamdulillah, it was preserved by our scholars uh, within the Salaf and after the Salaf and to, to, to fourteen hundred years later to, to for today, where we can talk about tasawwuf. So. Uh, yes, it wasn't mentioned in the Qur'an, much like many of the other sciences of this tradition, but Alhamdulillah, our scholars formulated it, um, and we are now able to learn from this, um, and able to reflect uh, the qualities of the Messenger of God. So you're saying it's not a new thing, it's been practiced in the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the time of Sahabis, yes. and the Tabi'in, Tabi Tabi'in, yes. like, uh, for example, Madrasha, uh, or the Mufti, Tam Mufti, wasn't there at that time. So exactly, exactly the point. So, for example, no one would debate that would was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam muhaddith, were they a mufassir, were they, of course, of course, were they mufti, of course, they were all of these put into one. But for the companions, the highest title for them was to be called a companion. Mm -hmm. And the highest title for those was to be a successor of the companions. Mm -hmm. So these titles didn't come only after when, many years after, where you had uh, the uh, scholars, they would then preserve the hadith, they will be muhaddith. These are where the titles are, but before this, the, the highest title was to be a sahabi of the Prophet So yes, these terms came after, but they, everyone accepts that the reality was definitely with the Prophet and the companions. They reflected all of these muhaddiths, mufassirs, um, many of these things that we understand today. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Right, Tasif. So, I believe Alhamdulillah, you've been practicing deen for many years and you're trying to practice deen as perfect as possible. Also, you have uh, developed something so that the other people can benefit you know, the way you practice it. So can you show us what, what yes, the uh, type of courses or Inshallah. you have designed? So, uh, Mr. Mahmoud, so definitely, so we, we will... Um, we ha there are practical workshops and, and so on that have been developed that we can share. But just on, on the point of the uh, tasawwuf, just to round off the conversation, um, if I went to my manager or my colleagues and said, tomorrow we will follow Sharia. Mm. We want to follow Sharia law. So imagine I, I work in, in government and most of my colleagues are non-Muslims. Mm. What type of reaction they will have? You know, what type of imagery that that word Sharia evokes in them. Okay. Particularly now, you know, there were, there's been a lot of focus on Brunei, stoning, mm. historically with the Taliban of uh, uh, killing, uh, chopping hands, and ISIS, so ISIS uh, even more. Mm. So particular words have particular uh, reactions depending mm. on what been we've been exposed to and what we have uh, experienced. So similarly, uh, we know the reality of Sharia, the what Sharia really is. Mm. Similarly, we may know the reality of Tasawwuf, Sufism. Mm -hmm. However, many people, even Muslims, uh, have certain perceptions, which yeah. sometimes they have been developed correctly because they observe people, they claim to be Sufis, yeah. who are doing things which are a little bit uh, odd. Yeah. Um, but also there is misunderstanding. So one extreme are people who, they even say they are not Muslim, mm. but they call themselves Sufi. Uh, another extreme are people who call themselves Muslims, but maybe they have practices like they are completely against the Sunnah and our law that mm. is allowed. So for example, consuming drugs um, or certain types of dances and, and uh, certain types of practices which Music, are against. Yeah, yeah. So what we are talking about is not this uh, extreme or that extreme. We're talking that anything which draws you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is within the boundaries of what we understand and as Sharia, there's the law of Allah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is Sufism and Tasawwuf. Because Sufism and Tasawwuf was not developed uh, a thousand years ago or 500 years ago. It is something that has been handed down from the time of the Sahaba throughout the ages. That's okay. why we can go back to the four Imams and we can give you references of how they practice Tasawwuf. Mm -hmm. We can go back to the Imams of the 6th century, 7th century, 9th century, 10th century. Um, you know, there are, we have Ibn Khaldun very specifically in his Muqaddimah talks about Tasawwuf as a science of Islam, just like Hadith and, tasa and Tajweed and many other sciences, uh, Tafsir, he talks about Tasawwuf. Mm -hmm. 
Many other mashaykh later, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, they also talk about Ibn, this. Ibn, Imam Ghazali. Imam Ghazali is the b best known, right? Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, it's not something they've invented, it's something they're preserving, okay. that they are saving. So similarly, in our time and age, we have scholars and teachers all around us who have inherited this knowledge of tasawwuf, uh, uh, that how to rectify the people, purify them, because this was one of the functions of prophethood. That the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the Quran, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ That he recites unto you the verses of Quran or the verses, the signs of Allah, mm -hmm. and he purifies you. Mm -hmm. So similarly the mashayikh, they are the ulama, they are the inheritors of the Prophet. So they also inherited this knowledge, the how to purify. So ulama teaches, particularly the ones that we have encountered, they have given us a very simple path and method. Mm -hmm. So how this method works is firstly you understand where you've come from, secondly you understand your objective. Okay. That we mentioned the ultimate objective is the pleasure of Allah, but how do we really know what, whether we're working towards this or not? Okay. Because that's something Allah will tell us in, in once we, the judgment has happened. So we teach that there are four metrics, four ways you can know that number one is to what extent are you giving preference to the command of Allah? There is one metric you can judge yourself that if you're giving preference to Allah in the way you eat, the way you earn money, the way you behave, then you are gain, gaining the closeness and the pleasure of Allah. Mm -hmm. Second, we say giving preference to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not just in the way you dress, in the way, but also in the way you behave, okay. in the way the things you choose to do, how you choose to make wudu, how you choose to um, engage in business, mm -hmm. which type of character do you prefer is the word of the Prophet ﷺ. Thirdly is, are you fulfilling the rights of creation? Mm -hmm. Your mother, your father, your neighbor, are you fulfilling their rights? Because if you're not, then you're not drawing closer to Allah. Mm -hmm. And fourthly is, are you doing all of these whilst in the presence of Allah, knowing that He is with you, watching you and seeing you, whilst you are doing your charity, your prayer, your service to humanity, are you doing that with sincerity or not? Okay. So we say preference to Allah, the Prophet, giving rights to creation and doing all of that with the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we begin by training our organs. So the first thing we train for example is the tongue, that how are we using the tongue to give preference to Allah, the way of the Prophet, giving rights of the creation so we don't backbite. Mm -hmm. That's the right of okay, the creation. Okay, so before going further, all these things what you are talking about, we can get it from Quran and Hadith and all these things are available nowadays. So why do we need a particular way of doing it? As you Correct. are saying it is a tasawuf, why do we need it? Correct. So this is a, a very important question. So to give an, an, an analogy is if I wanted to improve my health, mm -hmm. that I was very unhealthy and I need to gain strength, reduce my fat, improve my strength, improve my um, health overall. So where do I begin with? All of the literature, there are hundreds and hundreds of books mm -hmm. written about how to lose weight, written about how to exercise. Mm -hmm. You can go online and you will find so many routines that have been written. Mm -hmm. But just studying and learning about the, the how to lose weight will not make me lose weight. Okay. Rather, maybe I will gain weight because right. I'm sitting down reading and, and, and studying and watching YouTube clips on how to do it. What will make me change is when I ha have, can have the motivation mm -hmm. and the support to w get to the gym and when I'm in the gym I'm working on the most effective routine for me mm -hmm. and I may have a guide, guide and circle, like a yeah. personal trainer who has helped others lose yeah. weight. He has a track record that he has helped hundreds, thousands of people lose weight and he is there or she is and, and they're helping me understand okay what can I do next okay on uh, this note yeah. I have to stop you mm -hmm. it's time for a break uh, we'll be discussing further sure. after the break viewers um, it's a time for break and we are hearing something very important from Tasif inshallah after the break we'll hear further details so stay with us we'll see you after the break thank you mm -hmm. 